Jack Van Berg is an old-time horseman and undoubtedly one of the best trainers of all time. In 1976, he won 496 races, a record that stood for 28 years. In all, Jack has won more races than any other living trainer and is second on the all-time list. When he began training in 1955, Jack may have had one of the best mentors in the country, his father, Hall of Fame trainer, Marion Van Berg. He taught me work ethics. And I thank the Lord every day that I wake up that I had him for a teacher. He worked me hard enough to keep me tired where I didn't get mischief. And his greatest saying was, idle hands and idle minds make worthless children. So he'd make you work so you wanted to go to bed at night. He taught me everything he knew, everything he did. And that's what I've tried to do with my people. You go to work for a lot of people and they think everything's a secret. They don't want to show people work for them nothing. But like I tell somebody, they come to work for me and they can't train a horse when they leave. It's because they're too dumb or too lazy. In 1985, Jack was inducted into the Racing Hall of Fame, 15 years after his father. Well, that's a great honor to be there, but I mean, it's not something that I was looking forward to. My dad started with one horse and I don't want to be put on the same level as my father because he was a genius with horses. He bought everybody's troubled horses and he won races with them and fixed them up and repair them. And he was, I, I, I still say not because he was my dad, he's the greatest horseman that ever lived. His son isn't too bad either. And to prove it is a long list of successful racehorses, including Gate Dancer, Herat, and Targa. But Jack's best horse to date is unquestionably Ali Shiva. That horse just stuck out when we seen him as a yearling. He just stuck out like a diamond in a rock pile. And he has so much charisma. That's the great thing about him, he never had a pimple on him. Not a pimple. His legs were just as sound the day he retires, the day he's born. Although Jack could already see the tremendous potential in Ali Sheba, he would soon learn that not all stars are born, but made. Everybody says, geez, that was a nice filly you run yesterday. I said, you think she's nice? Wait till you see that cold I run tomorrow and I run out of Sheba. He finished fifth. And then we went to Turfway with him. That's when he broke his maiden. And Donnie Brumfield rode him. And Donnie Richardson was his agent. I said, Donnie, what do you think about that horse? So oh, he said, he's just another horse. <laughs> we still tease about that to this day. When he was down the backside, he was so far back, he got in trouble, you know, going to the first turn. There was a lot of trouble. And, and that horse, I think it was war, he really got in trouble, and then we had to snatch up. Masterful advocate, in fact, almost went out. War is in trouble on the inside, around the first turn. He had to go through all that traffic, but that horse was so, he, he was so smart. He, he knew what he was doing all the time. I was a little short, fat guy when I was little. And my buddies, we'd race down the sidewalk, and I'd catch up to them, you know, and they'd let me catch up. And then by the time I got a step in front of them, they'd take off again. And Ali Shiva was like that. Then twice taking the lead by one. On the outside, here comes Ali Shiva. He stumbled so quick and got back up so quick, uh, like Chris says, before he knew what was happening, he was back running again. win the Breeders' Cup. I've been three seconds in the Breeders' Cup, beat a nose each time. But winning that Kentucky Derby was, was something that just gives, gives you goosebumps. Ali Sheba astonished the nation with his willful victory in the 1987 Kentucky Derby. But to many, it looked as if the race had taken a little too much out of him for the upcoming Preakness. Steve Bass had come to work him, and I worked him a half a mile because I'd go slow because they're fit enough from the Derby anyway. And he went in 53 and change. And of course, all the reporters were there and they said, Jack, how oh, I just what I wanted, just what I wanted. Well, he went too slow. When we left the barn that day, he walked just like a dead horse. Just, oh, oh, oh. When we got to the end of the grandstand at Pimlico and those people started clapping for him and hollering his name, he started doing a little dance. Craig told me this later, when they got into the paddock, he told Jimmy Crowley, he said, Jimmy, if you think that horse is tired and knocked out, you better take another look, because by then his eyes were big as saucers, and he had that adrenaline working from them people clapping to him. And it's Ali Sheba on the outside, 
along the inside, bet twice. They race to the 16th pole. Ali Sheba on the outside, bet twice at the rail. It's Ali Sheba winning the Preakness. Ali Sheba finished fourth in the Belmont, falling short of the coveted Triple Crown, one of the biggest disappointments in Jack's life. There's no doubt in my mind he was going to win the Triple Crown. No doubt in my mind. And I told Chris that day in the paddock, I said, he'll be in front every step of the way. Chris looked at me like I fell off banana trail. I said, Chris, trust me, he can gallop faster than the horses can run. Jack words are told him. A year later, when he set the new track record in the Woodward, Chris comes back and he said, stood up in the saddle that day, I'll never forget it. Rode up there, said, Jack, you're right, he can gallop faster than they can run. I said, Chris, you're a year late and five million short. Ali Sheba ended his three-year-old year in the Breeders' Cup Classic, the first of many meetings with eventual Horse of the Year, Ferdinand. As the previous two Derby winners battled down the stretch at Hollywood Park, a rivalry was born that would define the future of both careers. Ali Sheba lost by a nose, but his four-year-old campaign kicked off with a comeback victory in the grade one Strew. But Ali Sheba's class is now pulling him through, and here comes a superstar, Ali Sheba, so impressive as he wins the Strew Stakes under Chris McCarran by about three in the end. With a fresh victory under his belt, Ali Sheba was ready for a rematch with Ferdinand in the 1988 Santa Anita Handicap. Chris was laying third, Ferdinand was fourth. Ferdinand come up, Ali Sheba just took off. So they took off together. Both Pinkai and Dallahousie, both, they snapped their heads just like that, them two horses. They said, we never dreamt nobody would be coming by us. They come through, Ali Sheba, Ferdinand on the outside, Judge Angelucci, Super Diamond at the eighth pole. The two contenders captivated the nation with their racing tug of war. Each meeting turned into an unofficial match race. The rivalry continued as they faced each other next in the equally thrilling San Bernardino handicap. Ferdinand on the outside and Alice Sheba, neither riders asked for a full effort yet. Ferdinand on the outside puts his head in front. Alice Sheba trying to come back at him, but Chase running a huge race on the outside. But it's Ferdinand and Alice Sheba, nose and nose to the wire. Ali Sheba and Ferdinand would square off one last time in the Hollywood Gold Cup, where Ali Sheba came in second with Ferdinand third. When it came time to retire, the two were again only noses apart. But before it was off to the breeding shed, Ali Sheba got one more chance in the Breeders' Cup Classic. It was muddy, you know, and it was a nasty day that day, in which I, I know Church of Downs because I raced there for years. I said, I'm not worried, the track will be good. No matter what it does, he'll get a hold of it. It was so dark that night, you know, you couldn't hardly see until they got right back down the eighth pole. Now time for the jewel in the crown, the $3 million Breeders' Cup Classic, and they're off. Slow City, Slow breaks alertly, and 49ers living right with him. Ali Sheba set down for the drive. First up flag is for Big Ali Sheba is right there, and on the outside, seeking the gold. Ali Sheba with the short lead, he's unyielding, seeking the gold. A final move as they come to the wire, and Ali Sheba, America's horse, has done it. Ali Sheba returns to the site of his greatest victory, and he does it here again at Churchill Downs. Ali Sheba wins the world's richest horse race, and he's now the world's richest horse.
After the Breeders' Cup, Ali Sheba was named 1988 Horse of the Year and retired to Lane's End Farm in Kentucky. And in 1993, like his trainer, Ali Sheba was inducted into Racing's Hall of Fame. In 2000, Ali Sheba was purchased and moved to Saudi Arabia, where he continues to live out his days as a king. The legacy of Ali Sheba remains fresh in Jack's mind, yet always looking forward to his next great horse. You just pray that you can get some. You might get one as fast as him, but you don't get him to stay that sound. If I live long enough, I'm going to get me another one. I'm going to win that derby again. You bet on that. <laughs>